from bringing back the deceased to creating this suffering abomination. These are the most horrifying animal experiments in history. The year was 1925 and Soviet scientist Sergei Brokonenko wanted to show off his so-called autojector, a little device he had created to keep organs alive during surgery. But how would he garner attention to it? He got an idea. An evil idea. He would use it to resurrect animals. Everything was set up. He would start by surgically decapitating the dogs and then quickly wiring their major blood vessels to the tubes of the device. Then the autojector would start circulating oxygenated blood into their brain and, in theory, bring them back to life. And it did work. The severed heads would respond to stimuli. For instance, their eyes would blink when poked. The heads also reacted to sounds. And when a citric acid solution was applied to their lips, they would respond by licking it. According to the logs of the institute, the dog survived for hours and in some cases a few days after the procedure, suffering from severe brain damage, infection, blood clotting and more. Around 20 years later, the same Dr. Brokonenko was in charge of the infamous cryogenic experiments. This research was part of a larger effort to explore how cryopreservation could be used in the medical field, but also paving the way for future space travel. You know, like making sleeping chambers from sci-fi movies. Anyhow, the first part of the procedure was to prevent ice crystals from forming inside the canine's body. Because ice bad. So the poor dogs first had their blood sucked out. Then replaced by various cryoprotectants that would keep their tissues from freezing. To further prevent ice formation. The dogs were cooled using a combination of ice baths and mechanical refrigeration systems, gradually reducing their body temperature to below freezing. After reaching the target temperature, they were stored in cold chambers designed to keep them at a stable, low temperature for varying durations. Later on, to restore the canines to a living, functional state, they were slowly warmed up often using warm water baths and pumping their circulatory system full with warm blood using his autojector from earlier. Some dogs showed signs of life immediately after being thawed, but most of the time Brokonenko had to use electrical stimulation or manual techniques to revive them. Though calling them alive would be an exaggeration. Their hearts would barely beat, and only a few of the dogs could breathe on their own. This state of suffering would go on for minutes and hours. Brokonenko noted that revival was technically possible, but long-term viability was still a major challenge. He had this to say. Following revival, the dogs exhibited significant psychological stress and multi-organ failure, limiting the duration of their survival. Brokonenko was a pioneer in life support science, and his research would go on to help countless people. But due to the grotesque nature of his experiments and the extreme suffering inflicted on the test subjects, he was a controversial figure to say the least. This is only the start, so stick around for more messed up experiments. In 1935, an American neurophysiologist named Dr. John Fulton at Yale University would go on to lobotomize a chimpanzee named Becky. The aim was to understand the role of the prefrontal cortex in emotions and cognitive functions. Becky was picked because she was labeled as a problematic chimp. You see, things went bad when she underwent some cognitive and behavioral tests aimed at evaluating her emotional reactions and problem-solving skills.
Failing these tests, she would get furious, <laughs> screaming and throwing objects around. So Becky went straight into the operation room. There she underwent bilateral lobotomy, a procedure where portions of her prefrontal cortex were removed. After the procedure, Fulton commented that Becky was profoundly changed by the surgery. Tasks that would have provoked fits of rage before the lobotomy were now faced with calm and placidity. Her post-surgical state confirmed that her prefrontal cortex played a significant role in modulating these responses. And it was said that this procedure had tamed her. This experiment would go on to inspire Antonio Moniz, who later introduced lobotomy as a common procedure on humans and somehow got a Nobel Prize as a result. In any case, this experiment caused Becky and countless others to become empty shell of their former self. Wh wait Why am I here? There Working under Fulton, a Spanish neuroscientist named Jose Delgado was absolutely horrified by these experiments. I thought Fulton's idea of destroying the brain was absolutely horrendous. My idea was to avoid lobotomy with the help of electrodes implanted in the brain. Delgado conducted experiments where he implanted electrodes in the brains of cats among other animals to control their behavior. By stimulating specific regions of the brain, he could make the animals exhibit behaviors like aggression, passivity, or arousal. In one experiment, he implanted a so-called stimmer receiver into a gibbon ape who was very rowdy. This implant was located in a region of the brain related to aggression. Then a lever was connected to this receiver. It was put into the ape enclosure, so every time the lever was pulled, this angry ape would go from alpha to beta, so to speak. And the results? Within just days, the social dynamics of the enclosure had been shifted. Delgado wrote, They all dream of an individual overpowering the strengths of a dictator by remote control has been fulfilled. At least in our monkey colonies. But let's talk about his most famous experiment, the Charging Bull Experiment of 1963. The idea behind this originated in a conversation Delgado had with a bull breeder. The breeder argued that while Dr. Delgado's implants might work on cats or monkeys, they stood no chance in stopping a bull bred for aggression. Delgado accepted the challenge and started to devise a plan that would leave everyone in awe. The bull was equipped with its very own steamer receiver, and it was showtime. The bull charged, and just before he was turned into ground beef, he pressed the remote. While the experiment showcased the potential for brain implants, it also raised serious ethical questions about the use of such invasive techniques on animals. Taking control over their minds and bodies, it's truly evil. But then I read one of his later quotes. We need a program of psychosurgery for political control of our society. Everyone who deviates from the norm can be surgically mutilated. Yeah, I don't think this man cared very much about ethical implications. Personally, I think this technology is completely harmless. It's not like it could end badly, right? Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov was a Soviet-Russian biologist and a pioneer in the area of artificial insemination. With the help of his technology, a stallion could fertilize up to 500 mares compared to just 20 by natural means. 
He was also interested in genetics and created a zebroid, a hybrid between a zebra and a horse. So in his mind, the next logical step was to create hybrids between humans and apes, so called humanities or man apes. The initial goal was to determine if female chimps could be impregnated with human semen. He began his experiments in the 1910s by conducting artificial insemination trials on primates. It failed, but he did not give up. Instead, he left the Soviet Union behind and traveled to French Guinea to conduct more ambitious experiments. This time, he collected the semen from prisoners to inseminate the female chimps. But, once again, these bizarre procedures yielded no results. Driven by what must have been a pure, morbid obsession at this point, when Ilya returned to the Soviet Union, he had a new plan. Instead of impregnating female apes with human semen, he would inseminate human females with chimpanzee and orangutan semen. And somehow, he found five volunteering females. <laughs> However, through some sort of divine intervention, just before this deranged story could spiral further out of control, his last ape suddenly passed away. Furthermore, Ivanov's ambitions for further tests were put on a permanent hold when he was caught in the Great Purge. You know, when this guy with the big mustache thought everyone was out to get him. This led to Ivanov's exile and imprisonment in what is now Kazakhstan. Very nice. High five. No, 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 no. As a final note, there are exaggerated stories suggesting that these experiments were made in order to create an army of hybrids, blending human intelligence with the physical strength of apes, all in order to spread communism. And while it sounds badass, it's obviously fake. Unless... Soviet scientist Dr. Vladimir Demikov was a leading figure in transplantology and in his pursuit to advance the understanding in this field. He conducted some of the most controversial experiments in all of history. Namely, the doghead transplants of the 1950s. The procedure looked like this. First, a smaller canine's head, or in some cases upper body, was removed. Following this, a section of a larger dog was cut open. Demikov would then start meticulously joining the blood vessels of the two canines together. This was an incredibly complex and delicate process, requiring a high level of surgical skill and precision. A simplified illustration of the connected circulatory system would look something like this. Anyways, these experiments were partially successful. The transplanted heads often retain some functionality, being able to see, hear, and eat food. But the overall health of the combined organism was very poor. Complications such as immune rejection and infections were common. The two-headed dogs typically survived for a few days, but in some cases suffered for up to three weeks before passing. Since connecting the blood vessels was the main focus, many nerves were left unattached, leaving the animals with intense neuropathic pain, a complex, chronic state of pain from damaged nerves. Although these experiments were crucial in advancing the field of organ transplantation, they were heavily criticized. Demikov acknowledged the controversy surrounding his work but remained steadfast in his belief that his research was crucial for the future of organ transplantation. In any case, he had created an abomination. Regardless of the suffering they caused, these experiments continued. In 1970, American neurosurgeon Dr. Robert White would go on to transplant the head of one monkey onto the body of another. His experiments were part of his broader research into brain preservation and transplantation, aimed to help terminally ill patients to suffer less in the future. 
The experiment began by removing the head from the recipient body and keeping it alive using mechanical ventilation as well as heart stimulating drugs. Then, the head of another monkey was removed and grafted onto the body. The test subject could track objects with its eyes and even eat. But that was pretty much it. Issues with the connected blood vessels led to blood clots. Furthermore, the use of high doses of immunosuppressive drugs caused severe side effects. So the animals would pass away within hours or days after the transplantation. This type of procedure is riddled with challenges. First off, fully connecting the blood vessels so the brain receives enough oxygen and nutrients to stay alive. But also connecting all the nerves and the spinal cord. A task that remains impossible even with our current technological advancements. Furthermore, the risk of transplant rejection is very high. And the risk of blood clots and infection cannot be excluded. So, genius mad scientists actually existed. While they contributed to humanity, should animals really have to suffer because of it? Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I am. I am.